Good morning, my creative friends. This is Dr. Manette Riordan, and this is Painting in Your PJs Live with Manette, where during the month of January, we are exploring symbolism, meaning, metaphors, story, and archetypes of all different kinds. And we started out in week one looking at different symbols. I am working in a handmade journal just made from things around the house and recycled uh, folders, manila folders. This week so far I've looked at horse symbolism and yesterday I painted this quirky little owl and ended up sort of finishing this page over as well. I'm happy with how this little cutie pie turned out again this is a journal that's all about experimentation exploration seeking deeper meaning and connection to the wisdom of symbols this week those symbols happen to be uh, animals i love painting animals they show up in my work all the time and we let's see also looked last week at specific symbols like the arrow the lotus the Hamsa and the Celtic cross. And today I woke up and I looked at my favorite coffee mug and it has this gorgeous bear design on it. And I thought, well, wouldn't it be fun to paint with bear? I have bears everywhere. This is a, a sweet, so soft little bear that, look at that little face that I bought when we were in Grand Teton National Park this summer. I have bear paintings I've done, bear candles, so love the symbol and magic of bear. So I went on unsplash.com and found this sweet little photo of a black bear, which is the most common bear here in the area where we live. We've seen lots of signs of bear in the spring and summer, and there have been bear sightings in our area, but we haven't encountered one in the wild yet. We've often been on walks where people will say, oh, we saw a bear down there this morning. And so, you know, we're we're both cautious and curious about these fascinating animals that have a lot of different um, meaning across cultures and symbolism. So some of the meaning of bear, and I was gonna grab my big Sharpie and just write and sort of plant some seeds of that symbolism down onto this page before I start making art, which is always my favorite way to start with any kind of visual journaling is to get my own words on the page. So one of the things that I love about Bear is that they, and I'm kind of, I'm looking at these little tags over here going, oh, it would be fun to do something to expand those tags. But they often symbolize meditation napping what I like to call as part of my six pillars of a radiant light deep rest deep rest you guessed today would be turtle so that's what you prepared I love it so um, turtle would be a really fun one too I was talking with a client yesterday about sea turtles and turtle wisdom would be wonderful. I can't wait to see what you create, Marion. I love that. And welcome, so glad you're here. They also symbolize sweet indulgence, sweet indulgence. They love honey and sweet things. I loved this particular photo because look at that mouthful of clover. And um, bears eat a lot of berries, right? A lot of berries and fruit. They've been known to drink out of people's hummingbird feeders, right? So they love the sweet things in life. But they also represent strength. If you think about grizzly bears, a lot of ferocity. Black bears are very shy. They, in Native American cultures, represent protection, our connection with the great spirit. They're often seen as guides on vision quests. They can represent dream time because of their uh, penchant for hibernating and slowing down. 
So connection to vision quests and to deep healing as well from deep rest flows deep healing. So, so many different uh, symbols and bears are another animal that occur in many parts of the world. They're extinct in some parts of the world, like they used to be common in Ireland and Scotland, but they're no longer there. And yet bear totem is still, um, is still part of the, the culture and the lore there. They live in a lot of different places. Think about polar bears, think about panda bears. And it's just interesting for me. Um, they often appear in totem poles in Haida and Pacific Northwest culture. And one of my most favorite experiences was going to the museum of, I think it was anthropology, or history in, they have a, a, a Haida museum in Vancouver, British Columbia, and being in a room full of totem poles was just an incredible, incredible experience. So black bears often live high in the mountains, right? They can, they have an incredible sense of smell. They're really good at living off the land and being resourceful would be another word and it's interesting to me as I've been on this journey the last couple of weeks through symbols that I've ended up choosing a few different symbols that are all about protection and oftentimes we can look at these sort of external representations of unconscious needs and so one of my own personal sort of core needs is always stability and security. Stability and security. I am definitely in many ways, even though I love travel, I love having a solid home base to return to. And when I was um, a girl in seventh grade, our house burnt down. And so there was a loss of home and security. So ever since then, home has been really important to me and so it's maybe not a surprise that I'm drawn to these images of protection. But again, I love just starting any blank page by maybe getting some of my own words, my own handwriting, maybe some of my own marks on the page just to get over and beyond the fear of that blank Page. And I have an idea with where I'm going today. You could do this with any animal like turtle that you may be working with. And I'm curious if it's uh, a land turtle, a sea turtle, a pond turtle. We have lots of turtles in the pond uh, near our home. And I love seeing them sitting on the logs floating in the water gathering up the warm sun, but they're also very skittish. I don't know very much about turtle symbolism. And again, I woke up this morning. I didn't know when I went to bed last night and I just sort of planted the seed before I went to bed that I would wake up and know what animal to paint. And I walked into the kitchen. I was up quite early this morning at 10 minutes before um, five and to make my coffee and got my favorite coffee mug and there was bear on that mug so uh sea turtle one of your totem animals i love that they are magic animals i have a a client who lives in hawaii and often swims with the dolphins and we were also um talking about something for her business and it made me think about sea turtles and they're so cumbersome on land and they're magic movers in the water and she was talking about like bear when sea turtle comes to land it's a time of rest right like they get to land and they just lay down and go into deep rest but i particularly loved this image of bear from unsplash that i found of this little black bear with this mouthful of clover in this field of clover and grass and so I think I'm going to collage the bear onto my background and paint the background today which is what feels really fun 
I also, if you missed the, the very beginning, had a lot of fun finishing up Owl. I had promised I would show Owl, and I went back and added a shiny pearlescent white over the, the top of the design and a little bit onto Bear. I glued the other half of this Sacred Circle design onto the page, did some journaling on here as well, but I was pretty pleased with them. Um, how this little playful owl turned out and letting myself be playful and not getting too caught up in making that owl look realistic. But today I really want to honor the bear magic with this photo because I love this photo. Unsplash.com is a great resource. Thank you, Kay. Good morning. Is a great resource for royalty-free images. Royalty-free images. Thank you, Blanca. I was on the receiving end of a coaching session yesterday, and um, one of the things that came up was this idea of seriousness versus playfulness and how I'm trying to honor and incorporate more play into my life because I've been really serious for a lot of my life. I take things very seriously and art is one of the places where I've learned to really give myself permission to play and explore and connect to the energy of fun in a different way. My husband loves joking around and funny movies and comedians, and so he's been for the last 30 years a, a person that's helped me understand the value of fun in my life, and yet I can still take things too seriously. And so this funny bear is also, I think, connecting to the energy of bears can be very playful and very silly, especially if you've ever seen bear cubs romping in the wild. And so bringing in a little bit of the, of the seriousness of their foraging for food and the playfulness of their lives as well is uh, some of the things that were on my mind this morning. So I'm feeling called to maybe just come in with some oil pastels this morning and get some color and marks down on the page feeling just kind of maybe a little more exploring of some of my favorite abstract painting methods. So I love building up layers this way. And I'm making these nice and chunky so that if I want to come back and see them later or in Andrea fashion, my friend Andrea Shebelu sort of scribing through some of the paint to get back to some of these marks, maybe even just using some of what's already on here. So bears here are often seen by rivers, so maybe this uh, there should have been some blue on here. We have a lot of rivers and water here, and last year was a high drought year in the mountains and so the bears were definitely coming down searching for water and there's um, a long time guest ranch dude ranch called sylvan dale about 15 minutes from here that's been super popular for weddings and guest ranch dude ranch type things over the years and uh the owners of that have recently donated that land and it's going to become public land and non-profit land which is pretty exciting but in one of our local facebook groups they were talking about hauling water and they were hauling water into in these huge plastic containers and then burying them under rocks uh, to make like little pools for the bears because the bears were in need for water and we want to keep the bears where they're safe and where humans are safe. 
And, you know, it's things you never think about until you move to a new place, and especially a place like being on the edge of the mountains in Colorado where wildlife is everywhere. Wildlife is everywhere. Uh, we had elk in our public park across the street, two huge bull elk last fall, and uh, the huge, like literally hundreds and hundreds of elk, huge herds of elk have come down from the mountains in search of food. We recently saw a big group, I don't know if they're a, a herd or not, of bighorn sheep. So proximity to wildlife has kind of been an interesting part. Lots of people sharing videos and community groups about bobcat sightings, an occasional mountain lion sighting. Our public park has a disc golf course and has big signs on it that says, beware of rattlesnakes. So the, the just the proximity to wildlife, and we're in a very suburban you know, neighborhood, but we are on the edge of town, on the edge of that wilderness. And so being prepared to have deeper connection with animals is always something that's very top of mind here for me. Okay, so that's super fun. So I'm thinking about where do I wanna go next with this? And what do I just have lying around on my table? Maybe bringing in a little bit of collage here and just adding a little more texture to this page. I kind of have a, like a, a sort of suite of things that I like to do. And these were just some collage papers left over from my Radiant Retreat this past weekend. And it's fun to kind of use things up that are lying around. I loved this. I found for 25 cents this Thai cookbook that had Thai script in it. And I just, there's something about that script that I find very pleasing to the eye. And yes, I'm coloring, covering up a lot of where I have put down those marks already and I can either you know come back and bring those back a little bit which I might do or just let them be buried in there just let them be buried in there so again just adding little bits of collage I'm kind of adding them I think just around the edges of the page the edges of the page and leaving the open space in the center because I'm wanting that to be a little smoother maybe less texture and I still want to have some of these fun elements on there so kind of putting it around the edge and we'll see what happens so grabbing my trusty matte medium here and my Starbucks gift card and I have this giant tub of matte medium so I'm thinking I'm actually going to pour some of that in there so I'm not wasting it and I can always pour it back into the container as needed. This paper is a little thicker, so I'm going to put matte medium on the front and the back of that to get that nice and flat on the page. <coughs> Excuse me, these dictionary pages are quite old and fragile, so they don't need as much help getting stuck on the page. I think the other thing about animal symbolism and not only are we living with and you know surrounded by animals although depending on where you live you know if you live in the city creating that connection with animals can be a little more challenging and I have I have very mixed feelings about zoos in general, although I have to say that the San Diego Zoo in San Diego, California is a spectacular example of doing it well, but they do provide education and access. And I think that we lose our appreciation for nature and fail to honor and celebrate it or think about 
the human impact on animal population when we don't have any direct experience with them. Don't have any direct experience with them. All right, so just getting some of these down on the page. And we're getting to that sort of, you know, crazy, chaotic, just building up those layers and not getting attached to any part of it, worrying that one part or another looks right or wrong, because this is all going to get covered up, right? Even though I might push the color back, and I'm thinking I'm going to go ahead and put a light layer of matte medium over my words and some of those marks, because it allows me to, let's see if we can get that one a little flatter there, to again push layers back, and we'll just see what happens. I don't usually put matte medium over the oil pastel, but we're just going to go with it. And I'm going to start adding paint without even waiting for this to dry, because I'm okay if the paint just mixes right in with all of that. Got some bumps in that one. I think why I like using the, the hotel key card or gift card is the sharpness of the edge allows me to get these collage elements really flat onto the page. I like the collage, but at this particular layer, I don't want to have too much texture on there. I don't want to have too much texture on there. So the other thing about animals is think about how many movies get made about animals, how many myths and stories animals appear prominently in all of them, right? Um, animals appear prominently, prominently in all of them. I think about, you know, the great buffalo spirit in Native American traditions, or the presence of kangaroo in Australian art and legend, the symbol of salmon in Pacific Northwest art, and frog is another one, right? There tends to be common symbols. And I'm thinking about the mythical experience next week, which starts next Saturday and is still available for registration. The link is in the description of the video today. And we're going to be focusing on the book, The Sacred Garden. And I'm just trying to decide where I want to go with what colors I want to start to bring in. And we're focusing on the, the novel that was originally published in 1911 by Francis Hodgson Burnett. Let's see if I can get this one open. Apparently, I haven't used this one in a long time. OK, not going to waste time with that. We'll find something else. Um, and it was one of my favorite childhood stories, and I think one of the the things that I love most about the the story was one the the character her name is Mary the main character my first name is Mary I'm a Mary Manette raised Catholic my mom was a Mary also and um, she's quite contrary in the beginning of the story. I think I was probably one of those kids who was also quite contrary, if you were to ask my mom to remember back to some of those younger days. But there's this amazing transformation that happens when she connects with the land and with nature, and that she has an encounter with get a piece of paper under there a boy named Dickon who can communicate and speak with the animals and when she connects with the bird who shows her the way to the to the gate to the secret garden and how digging and planting and bringing this garden back to life brings her back to life as well but it's full of animals of all kinds full of animals of all kinds and I was the kid who read 
Dr. Doolittle and um, anything about animals that I could find. I loved stories of animals and there's a TV series now and I'm forgetting the name about the vet in England, um, the country vet in England. I loved those books. And I don't know why I can't remember the name. And then as I got older, I fell in love with books about dragons and other kinds of creatures. I loved the movie Spirit about the gorgeous Palomino horse. And there was one about bears too, another Disney one about bears that was charming. I'm not remembering the name of that one. Or think about the Lion King. Like how many Bambi, right? Another story of my childhood. Animals figure so prominently in our mythology, in our history, and it's important to just think about the animal. Thank you, all creatures great and small. Read every single one of those books. Every single one of those books. And have been enjoying the, the series on PBS as well. All right, we'll get that cleaned off. That was a little too much paint on there. And it's, um, and I'm getting paint all over my ribbon. Let's see. I'm just gonna stick an envelope on top of that and blot some of that up a little bit later. So it's interesting how how transparent these colors are that I picked. So I probably want a little more opacity in some places. I was looking for my skewer. Let's see if we just have a small paintbrush. So this is the fun part of putting those oil pastels underneath the paint and then coming back and you know bringing some of that color back a little bit and again this is probably all going to get painted over but it's a fun way to just kind of take a minute to remember where some of that color is under here plus it's fun to just get some of those marks into that wet paint my paint seems to be drying really fast this will create nice interesting texture as I build up the page Hold off a little piece there. Okay, I'm going to hit this with the dryer while I decide where I want to go next. All right, dry enough, and as I was drying it, I realized that I am going to roll some white paint over the top of all of this and just kind of push all this color and texture back to, to create um, a little bit calmer surface here to work on. And remember that visual journaling and Art journaling is so much about release and letting go, experimenting here on the page, discovering what it is that you love, that this can then be translated to canvas or other types of works of art that you might like to do, but it's a constant building up of layers, a constant remember to let go, to allow, to experiment, to play, to get the voice of the critic out of our head, and just kind of lean in to 
trusting the adventure and where the page wants to take us. So I'm thinking about my bear here and wanting to sort of create this background on my page of this field of clover. So I'm just going to continue to build up with some of these brighter greens. And I'm still going to keep this whole thing, I think, super, super abstract. I don't need to cover everything up. I like being able to see some of these other marks and colors on the page here. And I have been a little obsessed with my brayer in my art journaling later as a just a different way. It creates a different texture of just getting color and marks down on the page. I think I want a little bit of that darker green in here in the foreground. Maybe just mix that in. little bit up in here. And sometimes I have so much fun creating backgrounds like this and I can get really stuck with a background like this and say I have no idea where I want to go. And it can be really fun to fill your visual journal just with pages like this, knowing that at some point you'll finish up those pages. I'm getting green all over my Celtic cross here because I'm such a messy painter. Thank goodness for baby wipes, a must have in the studio, a must have in the studio. So I'm gonna come back in and just clean that up a little bit. All right, I'm pretty happy with where this is at. It feels playful and messy. And I'm going to start coming in and building up some of the sort of grassy elements, adding some different strokes and marks, probably a few different shades of green as well to kind of get in. I have this really dark, dark green. That what would happen if we started with this super dark green to build up our layers? And when you're working with acrylics, you usually want to add your darks in first and build up towards your lights. Starting with your darks first. And I noticed that there was some, you know, kind of off in the distance. So we've got our brights kind of in the in the center here, right? But notice there's some darks here, and there's some a little bit of dark up here. And so I'm just layering in some of these darks again. A lot of this is going to get covered up, but we just want to have some of those deeper places of shadow in our fields of green. And I'm curious what other people are working on today. Are you painting? Are you drawing? Are you tingling? And it's fascinating when you look at a photograph like this of how many different shades of green, how many different shades of green are in there, right? Like we look at this from a distance and we go, oh, green. But when you get up close and personal, whether it's a photograph or actually out in nature, right now nothing's really green here except for the evergreen trees, but even those are so many different shades of green. Thank you, Marion, for coming along. I have to be so careful with my water on my art table um, or on my desk. I almost always use a water bottle and yesterday forgot to, to put the lid on that and came in to find that my cat tried to get in it. 
knocked it off, spilled water all over the floor. And the it took me a while to find the water bottle, which had rolled under a bookshelf, but they love dirty paint water. They love dirty paint water. So I have to be very mindful. And so the photograph over here, the bear's in focus, this part's in focus, but this part over here is kind of out of focus. We don't have those darks over here on this side, so we have more of those kind of lights. And so I'll see what that looks like because it kind of feels like I want to just continue a little bit of this across the page here. Again, just having a lot of fun playing and working. I'm not going to add a lot of detail to this background because, again, you know, I don't want to spend days and days on these pieces, right? I want to come in and spend the, the hour that I have in the morning and have it get mostly complete, mostly complete. Coming in now with a lighter green, starting to add a little bit more texture. May even leave this pretty abstract in the center. And I also, my preference is usually to work pretty fast because if I slow down too much, as you saw, Monday's video with the, the horse, the more I slow, slow down and start to think about things, then I start to, you know, really kind of overthink things. Collage of bears sounds super, super fun. And remember, everything's paint overable. A happy mistake. Sounds perfect. This is a funny, very yellow green which is kind of maybe good for this sort of mid-tone and again wherever I'm using one color making sure that you know I'm moving that color all around the page or using it in a few different places I love that I still have these little bits of orange sort of popping through and I'm sort of painting around this area over here just because I know that's where I'm going to be collaging in my bear. Bears are actually quite fun to draw. But I loved the sweet face on this one and wanted to just use that image as is and add my own flavor to the piece. Going back to bring back some of those bright greens. very excited about the mythical makeover experience which starts next Saturday and we're going to make a journal similar to this one with paper not with manila folders but it's a, a really easy no so journal that I learned from my friend Andrea who saw it in a video on TikTok. I love how these things spread. All right, so we've got a lot of darks in here. It's gonna be time to really brighten this up quite a bit, bring back some, we have kind of a, you know, a more brown green. We have this really deep green. We have this more grass green in here and I'm looking I'm kind of liking the sort of lightness around him kind of deciding where am I going to want him to sit and I think I'm going to want some space for journaling about bear over here in the center so I can see maybe I want a little bit more paint around him over on this side. 
So I'm going to come in with some of my lighter colors, not my darker colors, and just bring some of those grasses for underneath where he's going to go, keeping him pretty bright over here on this size side. All right, so I'm looking again just inspired by this and notice how yellow some of this is i've got some gray greens over here but i want to start brightening this up by bringing in some of these brighter bits of grass and i'm going to do that by just adding some yellow to the same green i have been using and see if we can just brighten up that green but start to mix some of my own colors of green trying to use up some of these i'm right at the tail end of so many tubes of paint right now and when we're mixing colors and i have a light color and a darker color it takes the tiniest bit of that darker color to start to change this so you know it's like if you get stuck mixing oranges or purples or a, a classic one it's often simply because once it gets a darker shade oh, it's kind of fun to use that palette knife in there it's really hard to brighten it up I love painting with a palette knife. It also creates some really interesting, interesting texture. I know that's a little bit glary under the lights. All right, that color is looking pretty good. I want a lot more of that in the center here, but this was a good test to kind of figure out where I'm going to start to build up the layers. And the yellow is good. I'm definitely going to want to come in and also do that same thing with some white mixed with some of this. And this is a Liquitex Light Green Permanent. It's a very pretty sort of grassy green to me. And again, I don't need very much of that green to brighten up those colors. Palette knives are great for building up texture quick on a page. Not always as satisfying as playing with some of those brush strokes. But what we're going for here, what I'm going for here, is abstract. I want to keep my darks. I want to be able to see my darks. So I'm trying not to cover over all of that. And adding some of that up here. And again, I can use that palette knife to just create some texture, push that color around, even take some of that color off to get back to some of those colors underneath. And just getting those kind of wild grasses growing in there. And again, I'm just kind of loving the sort of just abstract textural page at this point. I've lost most of what was underneath and I'm okay with that. And I might come back over here and let a little bit of this orange still peek through. Maybe it's kind of like some of the flowers. I can still see a little bit of my sun over here. Maybe I want a little bit more of that yellow and black peeking through. There's one of my triangles under there. So it's the fun thing about the oil pastels is that you can just continue to push back, right? Look, there's that river of color in the center. Maybe we want some of that really still peeking through. It can be hard to remember where all those bits and pieces were, so you can snap a picture if you want to, of where you put your oil pastel down on the page. But now I'm starting to just make it a little bit more interesting. I think that's going to be under the bear there. 
And I'm wanting to add some blue, even though in the photograph there's not some blue, not any blue. We don't see the sky. We're just seeing that landscape up and close. But I'm wondering what would it be like to just add a little light blue in here. And I have this Amsterdam, this is a turquoise green, so let's see, what does this look like? And I'm just trusting, way too much paint there, trusting that it's the right move to make, to just bring in, so this is just going to brighten the whole thing up. It's my landscape, it can be any color I want. And again, just uh, making an effort not to completely lose all of my darks. Just letting a lot of that blue come in over here up in this corner. My desk is a disaster at the moment. And again, it just uh, is serving to brighten the page up. And I'm going to come in here and just notice creating this nice landscape for Mr. Bear or Miss Bear. Okay, so I am going to, well, I'm going to use up the rest of this color here. I'm going to hit this with the dryer, get it really dry, and I'm going to add the bear and start to add some of the pink and white of the clover, the pink and white of the clover. And pink and green are contrasting colors, so I think one of the you know, appeals of this photo. We have the, the dark bear, but we also have the contrast of the, the pink and the green on there, which is super, super fun. Okay, I'm going to mute myself so you don't have to listen to me dry. So the paint is quite thick on here, so it's definitely taking a long time to dry. So I'm just going to maybe blot some of that little bit of thicker bits up on there. And when I have leftover pages like this, this just is going to become more fun collage fodder for other things. All right, good enough. So I'm going to go ahead and put Mr. Bear down with my matte medium because one of the things that I want to do is to make sure that he gets, I'm just getting some paint on the, or matte medium on the, the back of him as well, but that I want to paint him into the background. So most of him is going to stay the same, but I'm going to come in with some of my greens and make sure that I paint around the edges of him to make sure he feels like he's part of my painty background. And 
where my paint is wet, I'm getting a little bit of paint over the top of him, but that's okay with that baby wipe. I can just come right back in and clean that up, but I wanna get him nice and flat in here. And also, if I do get paint where I don't want it, I'll be able to come back and clean that up. So again, that matte medium can just go anywhere on the page, just cleaning that off a little bit. Trying not to waste anything. And then I'm just going to gently come back in and just clean that little spot of white paint off. He is such a sweet little bear. So he has a lot of flowers and greenery in him over here. But if I just take a little bit of paint, the same colors that I have been working with, Like this green has just a touch of red in it that makes it brown, but it's a light olive green, which I really love. And again, coming in with a very dry brush. Mix these together here. And just by starting to add some layers of paint, I'll bring back some of those flowers then suddenly he feels much more like he's part of the page, not separate from the page. Letting some of the grasses and imagery stay in there, but really just working on this, these bottom edges of him to make him feel like he's sitting down in the grass and I'm incorporating him into the page rather than having him sit on top of the page. Again, just making, I'm using a, a pretty small round brush here. It is a, uh, the size is all buried under there. It's probably actually a watercolor brush. I shouldn't be using with my acrylics. I try not to do that. And again, I just want him to be incorporated into the page here. Maybe even just brightening things up with a little bit of that yellow. Nope, don't love the yellow. I'm just gonna move that. The page definitely needs some white to brighten it all up with those grasses. And my clovers are going to bring some of that white in, so I'm going to be okay with not um, adding any white to my... Is that true? No, I'm feeling like I'm going to come in here and just see if we can... What happens if we just add a little bit of white in here with these greens? Maybe mix them all together and just bring a little bit of white and brighten up a few little spots in here. Again, working with that palette knife, very just abstract. It's just always what it needs is more light because if I were to stop for a minute and take a photograph of this piece, what I'm feeling at the moment is that it's pretty monochromatic and um, I have some darks, but I definitely don't have enough of those lights in there. So I'm going to want more of that. But right now, before I finish up for today, is I want to get some of those clovers added in here. So I'm going to come in, find a cleanish spot on my palette. Definitely going to want some white. 
and how about some pyrrole red which is kind of an orangey red so we'll see if that's really what it is that I want and I've got a Dilutions pink flamingo and we're gonna play with these three colors to start to build up our clover and I'm just thinking, okay, I'm going to try, no, I want this little tiny square brush. So if you notice in our photograph, the, the clover are quite small, right? They're just little speckles. They're, they're mostly white until you get up really close to them. And again, you start to see the darks underneath and some of those deeper shades. So we're just going to play with some of these colors. Again, it takes the tiniest bit of red with your white. Maybe I'm gonna add a little bit of that pink in there too. And I'm just gonna come in and very loosely start to add some clover-like flowers. Again, I'm not making any effort to make these realistic, so it's the illusion of a field of flowers getting some of those darker colors in first. Mixing my own pink there, just making it slightly different than right out of the tube. And he really doesn't, uh, this is all so abstract over here, but it feels like we're gonna want to bring in some of those clover all around him where he's standing in the field here again just making him feel more integrated with the with the whole piece even though it's a collage right even though it's a collage all right so i'm gonna add more white to get more of a mid-tone and I'm just going to keep building up these little abstract shapes, just sort of gently, gently daubing that brush. Maybe we're going to have some that are all light, some of them that are a little more clustered. I could easily go to town and get a little bit crazy here with the with the clover and have too many of them. And what I notice when I look at the photograph is that they're really buried in the in the grasses, right? They're not on the surface. So the next step of this is gonna be to come back with more detail in the grasses over the, the top of the clover. I'm gonna have a whole little nice little patch over there. So we have some random clover growing in our space. Okay, apparently that's an inexpensive paintbrush. I actually, I think I found these at uh, like Office Max and I, I love the, the shape of them and they had a whole set that were just these nice little teeny tiny brushes, but you get what you pee for. They don't last super long, but you know, I'm really hard on my acrylic brushes as well. So just continuing up working from that dark to light, bringing in a lot of those brights. I even have just whatever's on my brush, just even a few little more bits around. And just by adding those three darker pink, mid pink, light pink allows us to create dimension in the piece and just create sort of an abstract floral background. I am not a trained artist. I did not go to art school. And I've learned a few tips and tricks along the way, but mostly I've spent a lot of time just experimenting and playing with what are the the marks the shapes the the texture 
that make me happy, right? that make me happy. These are feeling like they're just wanting to kind of be connected across here, that they're maybe sort of floating all by themselves. And I want that field to feel a little more connected. And I'm just going to put a few more in here. So I'm pretty happy with how this sweet page about bear is coming along. And I'm going to come back in one more time with this nice light green and maybe even a touch of that pink and mix that in there. It's going to need a little more white. We want that to brighten up just a little bit. Maybe not that much. And I'm going to come in with this same brush and again just pushing those flowers back. Just those colors are still wet and that's okay. It's going to create that even more kind of fun abstract movement. And I'm feeling like this needs to be a little bit more dry before I come in and add those final layers. And it's also feeling like it needs a phrase. Push some of those back again. Or something to make the page feel finished, but it's going to take me a while to figure out what that is. And so I can always tell I'm about an hour in and my brain is saying, oh, just push through and get it done. And I know that this page will benefit from me walking away, taking a break, and just sitting for a minute with what is it that um, I really want to do to make this page feel finished. So I feel like it's in a, a great place to stop and pause for the moment. And I need to not be in my head and go, oh, Manette, just push through, get it finished, but instead to walk away, to look at it from a distance, to hold it up and stand back. But I'm pretty happy so far with this sweet little bear. I often have been told I have mama bear energy. I'm very protective of others. I care deeply about fairness and justice for others. And so maybe that's another reason that I'm super, super drawn to bear energy. I kind of wanted to just have some fun with that little bit of yellow in the corner there and maybe adding in just a little bit of sunlight. Plus, I just have all this yellow on my palette. Again, just sort of lightening things up. And putting some thought into where do I want to, oh yeah, I love the yellow. Where do I want to go next? So I think that's it for me and my bear today. I will be back tomorrow, Thursday, with my final animal of the week. And I am leaning towards stag, so an antlered deer but also curious maybe about dolphin. It's interesting, um, when I lived in California, I was so connected to the ocean animals and being here in Colorado, I feel much more connected to earth animals. But I do love the playful spirit of dolphin. I've also been thinking a lot about squirrel and the fun and play of squirrels. So those are some of the animals that are on my mind. I have no idea what that'll be, but I trust that I will figure it out as the day goes on. This is Painting in Your PJs. I am Dr. Minette Riordan. Thank you for joining me live, and I cannot tell you how happy it makes me to have even just one person here with me live chit chatting with me and I'm so appreciative of Marion and Kay and Blanca for your consistency and coming and creating along with me. I'm proud of myself. We are about five weeks into the 
the show now and going strong and I find on Fridays I actually kind of miss it um, although I'm happy to have that extra time in the mornings as well I will see you all tomorrow have an amazing rest of your day and be sure especially if you're watching the replay to let me know that you stopped by drop me a comment and be sure to check out the mystical makeover experience which starts next saturday january 21st have a beautiful day a creative day and a restful day see you soon